Hey Busters, welcome back to our second weekly roundup of Set 3's Union Impact Spoilers. So this video will be, um, I guess, a video of me going over my thoughts and opinions over the cards. So for those who just want uh, the information and not none of this super long video of my opinions, uh, please feel free to check out my uh, other video where I think uh, I just show all of the cards we show over today. But uh, we only go uh, show each card for about like 10 seconds, so it should be a quick like 5 minute video. So if you're interested, please check that out. So starting things off with red, we have Blitz Greymon. It, ha it has a high DP of 12,000 and costs 12 to play and 4 to evolve from a red or black level 5 source. It comes with Pierce as well as a when evolved effect that lets you devolve to an opponent Digimon. Cost wise, it has a standard cost for its high DP and effect. Effect wise, it looks to be average to slightly average at best, reason being that the devolve mechanic currently isn't that powerful. While it's great forcing the opponent's ace monster back to a weakened state, the thing is, it's still there. This means it's still a lingering threat unless you take care of it, which is impossible to do while it's active. However, this is probably why Blitz Greymon comes with Pierce, so you're able to destroy any resting opponent Digimon that it can't destroy normally, even if they have a higher DP. For blue, we have yet another Chibimon with a similar effect, except instead of gaining a thousand DP when it becomes active, it's a draw one when you have jamming, a much easier requirement, especially with the blue cards in set 3. A great option depending on your deck, but honestly, uh, booster set 1 Upamon is the better choice, but this is a great budget substitute for Upamon as Upamon is slightly expensive. Airdramon is the generic blue security Digimon of the set. It's rather disappointing for such an iconic Digimon, but until we can see a bit more cards and the set 4 cards, we won't really know how strong security Digimon will be. Next up, we have the vanilla Digimon Bastimon. With a play cost of 7, 2 to evolve, and 8000 DP, it's not a bad card. A good option for Omega Blue decks that want to get to level 7 ASAP, and Bastimon's 2 evil cost is a great way to do it. Our next card is, in my opinion, a deck maker. One of the 13 members of the Royal Knights, Doofmon, sports 11,000 DP for the cost of 12 or 4 to evolve as well as 2 effects. Its first effect is a weakened version of Booster 1's Metal Garurumon, in that it allows you to play a level 4 or lower evolution origin onto the field free of cost from one of any of your Digimon. While it's not bad, its second effect is its main deck making ability. Here, Doofmon gives all of your level 4 or lower Digimon jamming. This is crazy good as it just makes any weak Digimon a full blocker. Either they waste their time destroying your level 3s and 4s, or they live to survive another security check through jamming. Not just that, remember Secret Rare Vidramon from Booster Set 1? Now it can attack twice with jamming. Have extra memory? Evolve into Imperial Dramon, Dragon Mode, and suddenly everyone is active again. In my opinion, Doofmon will definitely be abused, no doubt. The final blue level 6 in the set is Godramon, a solid 11,000 DP for 11-3 costs. Its effect of becoming active isn't bad, but definitely more suitable for abusing EOEs like Upamon's for drawing or Zudumon's memory gain. But honestly, it's just a poor man's starter deck Metal Garurumon. While it does have cost, or rather, while it does cost less to play, I'd much rather pay that extra one memory on that one turn to bypass the requirements of needing another Digimon. To make it active. Next, we have Upamon, but in a yellow version, and it has a similar effect to its blue counterpart, which is amazingly good. No doubt this Upamon is going to be highly sought after, while its effect only activates when you have 3 or less security, but for yellow decks, this isn't much of a problem, and unless your yellow decks are up against red, you won't really be losing the game anytime soon with 3 security. For our next card, we have Kerubimon. Note, this is the vaccine version and not the virus version, granting it the feature of Great Three Angels. Until I actually try it out, my opinions are just that, but on paper, it seems extremely good. Not only is it a recover one on attack when you have three or less security, but it actively lets you choose, making your next security card extremely strong if you have the right Digimon there. Meaning, you just need to choose a level 6 and the opponent will now hesitate to attack knowing that their next attack will possibly cost them their Digimon. But for those who want to swarm, you can also choose the, uh, the new Ankylomon with its uh, security effect of playing itself. 
So there you have some pretty good options. On to our green ones, our green cards, we next have our Digitama Minomon. It's got a decent DP boosting effect, but for green, Argomon still remains the best green Digitama. While Tanimon's DP boost only kicks in when you evolve, Minomon requires you to be attacking an opponent Digimon. As green generally won't survive security checks due to their low DP, unless they're a level 6 Titamon or something of similar uh, strength, Minomon is probably a slightly better choice over Tanemon. As generally when you want to destroy opponent Digimon, they generally have more DP than you. So in my opinion, Minomon here is probably the second best choice after Argumon, depending on big, uh, deck builds. Next, we have Wormmon. Its effect is similar to Palmon, but allows you to also search for a level 5 at the cost of only activating on Wormmon's destruction. As such, it's definitely worth it's such is definitely worth playing and using as security checking fodder. But honestly, uh, depending on your deck build, it may or may not find its uses, as you do want to keep your Digimon alive. For green decks especially. Its evolution Stingmon is also good. I can see people running it mostly for its cheap 1 EVO cost. Its EOE is just a poor man's Okuamon EOE. However, using both Stingmon and Okuamon, and that's plus 2 memory for destroying an opponent's Digimon. Used with Rusty Ranamon and not even active Digimon are safe. And combine this with the brand new uh, Ichijoji Ken Tamer from the set, which we'll go over later, and that's 3 memory just for attacking opponent's Digimon. So, I can kind of see some brand new builds which focus on gaining memory while destroying your opponent's Digimon. So, as Imperial Dramon is what Hyale Dramon evolves into, the creators decided to throw a curveball and hit us with a niche Digimon that is sure to excite some fans, Bancho Stingmon. And just like Omegamon and Seraphimon, Bancho Stingmon comes with the feature of Bancho. While it's a cool card, its effect is sadly really situational. It has a rather average cost for a level 6, but it also has the lowest DP for level 6 in the game. When its effect kicks in, however, it effectively allows you to check 3 security cards with enough DP to overpower any uh, security Digimon unless uh, the opponent is running the overpowered tamer Takeru. However, the incredible high requirements of needing not only an opponent Digimon with 12,000 DP, but needing us to also fight it is honestly a hurdle too high to overcome and as, su as such, Bancho Stingmon can't currently be recommended. While green does have tons of options to rest the opponent, other level 6s look to be better options. But of course, this is all speculation before seeing it in play. Just like how Pinokimon wasn't played at all and is now suddenly splashed into tons of uh, other decks outside of green, Bancho Stingmon may see its time in the spotlight. Off the top of my head, I could see a good combo of Banjo Stingmon combined with, um, uh, what is it, uh, Dimension Scissors, in the fact that Banjo's, uh, Banjo Stingmon's effect does state that you gain its uh, DP and security boost until the end of turn. Meaning, by using this, you, if, you can ab if you are able to use Dimension Scissors, Banjo Stingmon, su uh, assuming it can survive, can effectively check for 6 security. First, it destroys the opponent Digimon, and then checks for 3 using its Pierce ability, and combined with Dimension Scissors option card, it becomes active again, allowing you to directly attack the opponent's security with its boosted 7000 DP and 3 uh, security attack. So honestly, you can probably make a nice gimmick deck with it. So next is a card that looks to be a great in Pinocchio control decks, Cressmon. Part of the Olympus 12, it's a 12-5 for 12,000 DP. However, its 5 EVO cost is offset with Absorb Evolution 3, dropping its cost down, evolution cost down to 2. Its second effect looks to be really good, as once per turn, it lets you rest opponent's Digimon when you want to use the Absorb Evolution effect. So, just rest your opponent's Digimon to evolve into Argomons, then bam, Pinokimon keeps them down until their next turn. Not just that, Crismon effects suggest that other green Digimon not yet revealed in set 3 and possibly 4 will also sport Absorb Evolution, making green decks even faster. For purple cards, we have the fan favorite from Adventure 02. Starting with Mummymon, it's basically an archetype card. 
being faithful to the anime, it lets you pay three to destroy itself to bring back a bur burial Vamdemon onto the field, free of cost from your trash. Do note that while it does cost three to activate this on attack effect, the wording actually allows you to bring back Burial Vamdemon first, then Mummy is Mon is destroyed, which from Burial Vamdemon's effect nets you a plus one memory. So it effectively it's just costing you two to use the uh, use Mummy Mon's effect. And with Purple's milling power, getting Burial Vamdemon out into the trash is insanely easy. But what if Burial Mon or two of them are stuck in your hand? Well, Mummy Mon's true love, Arukeni Mon, is there to pick up the slack. She is effectively the same as Mummy Mon but can also be evolved from a green Digimon, as well as letting you play Barrymon Vamdemon from your hand instead of the trash. So with these two cards, you're pretty much guaranteed to bring out Burial Vamdemon. And like I said last week, while the five Evo cost of Burial Vamdemon was a bit steep, I had to hold off my final opinions until the rest of the set was revealed, and here it is, more archetype support. And with this, I think a budget Vamdemon control deck is possible. Our final purple card is without a doubt a chase card that will be sold for quite a lot regardless of how well she'll fare in the meta. But taking a look at her effects, she looks to be worthy of her 7 great demon lore title. Lilithmon lets you grab any or up to 2 purple option cards if you have 10 or more cards in your trash, as well as granting you 2 memory per turn if you use an option card. This is basically a free night raid for swarming and chimeramon fodder. And while our current selection of purple options cards are limited, I am willing to bet that Lilithmon here combos very well with some new option cards we have yet to see from set 3. Finally, onto our black cards. Kakinmon has this alright EOE of granting you one memory, but only if you are a level 7 Digimon. So far, we only have four known level 7 Digimons. Omegamon, Millenniummon, Ragnalordmon, and Omegamon Alter S. And unfortunately, we don't really know Omegamon Alter S's uh, effect nor evolution requirements, but we are we can probably safely say with a 95% chance, judging on what Omegamon Alter S comes from, that it will evolve from either a red or black source. Reason being, Blitz Greymon is a red Digimon and Kreskarurumon is a black Digimon. As such, Kakimon here is able to evolve into 3 out of 4 of the possible level 7s, making it a great choice for Black Legend Arm decks, as Black Legend Arm decks will probably be, one, be able to search out uh, Ragnalordmon, and if you use the Metal Mamemon, which is a black, car, uh, black Digimon, it's also able to bring back any trashed um, Millenniumons. So next up we have Psychemon, the recolored Gabumon. It's a generic level 3 that costs 1 to evolve but grants a whopping 5000 DP. However, I can't really recommend it as black doesn't really do weenie rush, and Digimons with EOEs are a much better choice for decks. Edamon is another fan favorite and is once again paying tribute to the anime. Here, just like in the show, when Edamon is destroyed, he may come back as Metal Edamon, which is a nice trade off for its low DP. It having blocker is really good too, as it will make the opponent think twice about just destroying it. As of now, it's probably going to be stuck in the gimmick tier deck, similar to Taiga and Tyrannomon decks. But once King Edamon comes out, then it may be time for a favorite monkey to really shine. Combi comboing with Edamon is of course Metal Edamon. Although Edamon may not see play, Metal Edamon itself by itself may. It has an average cost and really do, uh, really low DP, but its two effects make up for it. It changes into a 12,000 DP Digimon on your opponent's turn, and on your own turn, it cannot be blocked by any means. Great for budget black decks, but honestly, black super rares aren't that expensive, so War Greymon looks to be the better choice. Kreska Rurumon is a strong card when built around. It has restart per N which allows itself to be protected by attacks, but its second effect is also quite nice. The ability to field a level 5 for free is huge, which is why it has a slightly steep requirement. However, I'm sure there will be a few newly introduced black cards to help set this up, specifically the Blackware Gururumon or whatever level 5 they decide Gururumon should evolve into. 
If I had to guess, I'm thinking there may soon be cards that let you return cards back to the top of your deck. For the new tamers, we have, as expected, the cast of O2, starting with Daisuke. It's a great substitute for Booster 1 Yamamoto as Daisuke grants a minimum 3 start, as well as letting you search the top 3 cards for any green or blue Digimon. Note, this one does not specifically say which uh, only one or or the other, if you open a green and blue Digimon, you're able to add both to your hand. This card will probably replace a few Rinas, as Daisuke isn't limited to Digimons with V in their name, and grants you at least 3 memory per turn. Overall, a great boost to blue decks. I can definitely recommend it. Not to leave them out, Daisuke's partner in crime, Ken Ichiyoji, is also a good card. Like Mimi, he grants a minimum 3 star, but his second effect grants you 1 memory if you destroy an opponent's Digimon in battle. Overall, it's a decent card, and combined with Stingmon and Okuamon's EOEs, this will easily net you 3 memory upon em enemy destruction. So I can definitely see Rusty Ranamon decks seeing a bit more play soon. However, Mimi's ability to rush out Digimon from the racing area just can't be ignored. And, speaking of Mimi, she joins the purple faction in set 3 with a rather unique effect of letting you gain one memory by resting Mimi whenever an option card is played. Her effect works on both players' turn, so it can be used on your turn to give you extra memory to work with, or on your opponent's turn to throw off their memory calculations. While, Yama more, rather, while Yamato has a much better effect, his second copy is generally a dead draw as you win pay 4 just to fish back a card, whereas the more Mimis you have, the more advantage you gain, whether an option card is played. Have 2 or more out, and suddenly that opponent's Gaia Force just costs 10 or more to play. Overall, a solid card I can see being run at max copies, especially in control Vandamon decks. Venom Vandamon from set 2 gains you memory when opponent, uh, opponents attack. Burial Vamdamon gains memory when Digimon are destroyed, and Mimi here will complete the Holy Trinity and gain you memory when they play option cards, fully locking the opponent out of memory. In fact, I might have some theory deck building to do after this video. And finally, for our option cards, we have some real good ones this time. First up is Cracker, a 4 cost option that either burns one or recovers one, opponent's choice. It has no security effect, so that's a bit disappointing, but its effect is quite powerful. It's a better version of Conversion Wave, as it costs it's cheaper to play, and just like Conversion Wave, it probably actually won't see play unless there are some cards that get stronger the more security cards you have. Bifrost, on the other hand, is a decent 3 cost stall card. Minus 3000 DP is enough to take care of the more popular level 3 choices being played, and also makes them useless for a turn if the reduction wasn't enough. Overall, it's a decent card, but I can't really recommend it until I see more yellow cards. Rematch is an amazing card. For only 2 cost, it gives one of your Digimon the ability to revive this turn, neg negating its uh, when played effect. However, this works amazingly well with Mummymon or Arukenimon for those summoning effects, but not just that, Digimon with Drag Down and other when destroyed effects that kick in like Edamon's gain double effects. Honestly, purple has some amazingly good option cards, and I feel this one is going to be put to great use, possibly even abused. Next we have Those Were The Days is a foe destruction card. For a cost of 4, it'll devolve one opponent Digimon, and if the devolved form cost 4 or less, it's destroyed. This pretty much means it's designed for devolving level 4s to 3s, for its destruction effect to kick in. While there, while there are a handful of level 4s that cost 4 to play, those Digimon are usually evil fodders, and not worth teching this card in just for them. Overall, it's an okay card that might see play, but if I had to say one thing about this card, its art is definitely top tier. Next we have Juro Dai Taiken, or I guess B-Cyclone if we translate it to something that makes uh, sense in English. It's a pretty good card for black in my opinion. For 3 memory, it gives all of your blockers or Digimon with restart, security attack plus 1, which is pretty much all black Digimon worth running. Toy Agumon will grant restart to Digimon without it, and tons of black Digimon already have blocker. Overall, it's a really good card for black decks that want to be more aggressive or are always just one attack away from victory. 
and with black cards not really having any staple um, option cards to choose from, Beast Cyclone here seems to fit the bill. God's Breath is an interesting card. For 2 memory, you give one of your Digimon restart as well as immunity to DP reduction as well as being unable to be returned to your hand or deck. Uh, specifically, these uh, cards would mention, I guess, uh, it prevents Kokuta's Breath from returning the Digimon to under your deck as well as Millennium Mon from bouncing it back to your hand. Its security effect is also amazingly good as it makes the opponent unable to attack you. I fe definitely feel like this card is going to be played in black decks, and Mugen's Cannon and Hell's Grenade are good, but as de-evolution leaves them on the field, they just aren't that great. As such, I feel like God's Breath or the previous Beast Cyclone will be put to better use. So overall, those are all the cards that I have uh, currently revealed since my last uh, spoiler video. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and as always, um, please leave a comment down in the comment section below if you have any thoughts or comments, as well as uh, anything you want me to possibly um, clarify. I'm more than happy to get back to you guys on that. So once again, thank you guys for sticking all the way till the end. I really appreciate it. As always, this Buster Kun here saying thank you, my Twilight.